Welcome back. So today we are going to talk about something very, very special again. And I will stress that please watch the link that I will put right in the description, right at the top. This is Michael Bruce's background on his work on the XSL X1. And that is way too difficult to say more than once. But um, the background, he explains everything from high fry finding at figuring out that the driver was the same as Dark Magician, getting the set from Ratchet. Many thanks to Ratchet for providing this and how Michael kind of got it into a state that more resembled Dark Magician. And for those of you who don't know the background, Dark Magician, they stopped making it, what, about a year ago. And people have been talking about it almost since then, trying to figure out how to get back to the original Dark Magician. So Michael Bruce basically got this into a state that sounded to his ears very, very close to Dark Magician, probably a little bit better because the bass is a little bit um, higher. And his video sort of stopped with him talking about the 3 dB bass bump. And, and I will say that when I put it in my ears right after I received it, I'm like, there's no way that that's 3D. It has to be more because it feels very, very bassy. So threw it on the coupler, took a measurement, and you're kind of looking at it and like, okay, so, you know, I think there was actually an, a little channel imbalance and maybe it actually is probably closer to 5 dB, but it's actually a bassy boy. And if you go back and listen to precisely what he said, he really talked about the base leakage from that big vent right there. And I think part of that does come across and he calls it kind of a tactile bleed through that vent. And I sort of have to agree, it is a bassy boy. But, um, you know, just looking at the graph, we kind of said, yeah, it looks kind of interesting. It actually looks like a Michael Bruce tuning. You've got this very much balanced mid bass with almost the exact same amount of pin again, low pin again, nice extension. You know, this is kind of a, you know, something cool. I wouldn't exactly call it Dark Magician. I wouldn't call it special looking, but um, hey, it looks looks pretty cool. And I think he would agree with that. I think looking at it on its own, it doesn't look like anything special. Put it in your ears and you're kind of like, I don't, I don't, I couldn't correlate what exactly was going on in my ear versus what was on the graph. And it really took putting Dark Magician in the same graph to figure out what was really going on. So uh, many thanks to Precog. I think his Dark Magician um, measurement is much closer to the actual set than mine, so we'll use his. And Sting, codename Sting, is actually in red. So again, this 3D, 3DB base boost, I think, is actually boosted a little bit more. What comes across outside your ear and through the vent holes, probably a little bit more. So this is very much a very fun Dark Magician. Part of what I didn't like about Dark Magician was it was actually pretty lean. You can kind of see how lean it is. Very detailed, very textured, very high quality bass. I can't argue with that, but was it fun? Uh, not, not so much. If you put some tape on it, you kind of get up into that fun range. But this is a much more fun, much more versatile much more handling of tons of genres compared to the original Dark Magician. The original Dark Magician was sort of along the lines of, of Oxygen. Very good at acoustic music, um, very detailed voices, instruments, but as far as like regular pop music, R&B, EDM, it wasn't really that kind of set. So this is essentially a Dark Magician that does tons of genres, does EDM, does rock, it does a lot of heavier bass required genres and it's very very fun very very cool that that happens and you can kind of see what happens here so this is fun bass fun bass and then it dips right down right into where dark magician has its specialness in the mids and how detailed and transparent and textured they are so this kind of bleeds off and fades out into beautiful mids just like dark magician and that's sort of where i first caught the whiff of that it sounds like dark magician <laughs> Listening to the bass, I was like, there's no way. It's not even close to Dark Magician. And then as you hear this transition right here into this dip and this whole thing kind of fades out, you sort of get some of that bass bleeding out through that vent hole and becomes kind of a subwoofer, not bleeding into the mids, but there is still bass there. It's um, a bizarre thing to hear, and uh, I, don't, I don't know if that will survive it. It's actually a very cool effect, and I'm not sure how much control he has over it. But um, yeah, it's actually a very interesting thing to hear, because you're actually hearing this dip out 
and from inside your ear, this sort of plateaus out into very fine mids, but there's still plenty of bass happening um, sort of outside. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. it it's kind of strange. And I think if you listen to what Michael says, it's, it's hearing tactile bass through the vent hole, through into your ear, but not through the actual nozzle. Um, yeah, for me, it just basically transitions, but you're still hearing plenty of bass, but then Dark Magician shows through. And then he really kept my favorite part of Dark Magician, low pin again, right? So Dark Magician is actually even lower, and I think he brought it up a little bit. And I think that's the right move, right? Bring that up a little bit because we now have a little more bass, so you have to need, just need a little bit more there to make everything clean and clear. And yeah, I think this is exactly what, you know, if I would have had to predict what Dark Magician 2 would have been, this is really, really close. Instead, they really botched it with an even bigger V and didn't really bring out the specialness. It, it lost a lot of the specialness of what made Dark Magician um, a very special set. And this is sort of more like a basier version of Dark Magician 1, almost the same Miz, but a lot thicker, a lot more fun, a lot more versatile, but the same exact pin again and the same transition through treble, lots and lots of treble extension. And all of this gets you all that original stage from Dark Magician 1. So, yeah, I have to absolutely agree with Michael. It's essentially a more fun, better version of Dark Magician 1 for me anyway. If you like the super lean thing, you know, that's probably, you're still probably with Dark Magician 1. But yeah, I think uh, right now where we are, or at least where Michael is with this, I think he is trying to secure more sets or more drivers or some combination of the two. So this is more of a, hey, stay tuned, uh, watch Michael's channel, see how he progresses on this. But those of you who were really hoping for a Dark Magician 1 um, to be you know, brought back, recreated, resold, I'm not sure that's ever going to happen, but this might be the closest and perhaps an even better version of, of that set. So I am kind of super geeked on it. I know Michael is super geeked on it and trying his hardest to get this done. So that's what I got. Go watch Michael's channel. Go watch his video. And uh, uh, one or both of us will try to keep you updated as this uh, gets along in the uh, project process. So thanks again for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.